With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandsLots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. How would you like a 15% discount to my daily email, the stack of stuff, the show notes, discounts to the conference, all of that. All you need to do is text the word show to 33777. You'll get the annual subscription with a 15% discount to my daily email. You'll get the stack of stuff, the links to the show notes, discounts to the conference, and so much more. All you have to do is text the word show, S-H-O-W, to 33777. Text show to 33777. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour One. Hello, America. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the nation. The phone number, 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program, delighted to have you as always. You know, this is one of those days where I, I, I got up, I prepped the show, I knew what I wanted to talk about, and well, then... The inflation numbers came out, and suddenly I got to talk about uh, important big news of the day before I get into all the stuff I wanted to actually talk about. Uh, Right now, the Dow Jones is down about 450 points. The NASDAQ down about 222 points. S&P 500, which had crossed over 5,000, is now down to 4,964, down 57 points. Uh, Why? Why? The inflation news, it doesn't look like there's going to be, well, uh, any real movement by the Fed to cut interest rates because of how inflation is coming in. Um, Let me give you some perspective here, just so you understand where this is trotting out. This is the coverage at CNN with the White House economic advisor, Mr. Bernstein, who seems to be happy with the economic. This morning, another sign the economy is getting better and better. The first big inflation report of 2024 spelled some good news for consumers. Prices rose by 3.1 percent for the last 12 months. That's a slight pullback from December's rate, but not as much as economists had expected. Remember, prices surged after the pandemic. We all felt it peaking at 9.1 percent in June of 2022. Federal Reserve introduced 11 aggressive rate hikes in its battle to try to bring down those inflation numbers. Joining me now to discuss, Jaron Bernstein, chairman of the White House Council of Economic Advisors. First to you, what do you think of this these new numbers that have just come out in the last couple of hours. Well, what you just described was very accurate. The trend is our friend. We had inflation peak at over 9% in uh, mid 2022. It is down to 3.1% in January. That's a, a six percentage point or two thirds decline off its peak. Now, that's occurred while labor markets have remained very tight, very strong. And that is a recipe for rising inflation adjusted paychecks. Wages are beating prices at a nice clip. 1.6% over the past year, that's real buying power for middle wage workers. And again, that's the combination of easing price pressures amidst a strong job market. So a 1.6% increase in wages adjusted for inflation, according to him, means real buying power for the middle class. Uh, Well, that was CNN. Let's go over to, well, um, how CNBC covered it. This issue we talked about, about these beginning of the year price increases, uh, is something uh, that is that drove uh, inflation this time around. Uh, a, a lot of a big increases in medical costs. You had uh, medical care up 0.7, uh, motor vehicle insurance up, up 1.4, hospitals um up as well. You didn't you didn't get much. Uh, you got a little relief from the used car world. You had food prices up. 
It was uh, just a lousy month when it came to inflation. And of course, real earnings also declined uh, in the month. Uh, worth pointing out. Yeah, real earnings declined, contrary to what the White House is saying over on CNN. Here's Rick Santelli as well, breaking it down as he usually does on CNBC. It just headline more number news. expected to be up two tenths of a percent is up three tenths of a percent. That's the hottest since SEP of 23 when it was up four tenths of a percent. Strip out food and energy, even hotter, up four tenths of a percent. Also, one-tenth hotter than expected, up four-tenths of percent. Well, you equal that going to May of last year. You surpass it going to April of last year when it was up 0.5. The year-over-year numbers also hotter, 3.1 on headline year-over-year. We are expecting 2.9, but did make progress versus the rearview mirror, which stands at 3.4. Now, if you consider 3.1, we've already been there. We were there in November of last year, and we were at 3.0 in June of last year. Finally, CPI year-over-year core, I think one of the ones I'm paying most attention to, 3.9%, exactly as the recent month, December 3.9, two tenths hotter than expected. Not good numbers, despite what the White House is saying. It's not good. I've been saying for a while, and and I got to double down on this, that the White House is focused on the macroeconomic picture. The United States compared to China. The United States compared to the EU. The United States compared to China and Mexico, and everything is fine. And in fact, you look at the macroeconomic picture, the country is great. The problem is the voters, you and me, we focus on the microeconomic picture, the the how does it affect our house versus other houses inside the United States. We don't care about the United States versus China, the United States versus the EU. We care about us, our family. How is our family doing? You know how our family is doing? Auto insurance has increased 20.6%, the largest increase since 1976. Non-prescription drugs have gone up 9.2%, the largest increase ever. Repair of household items up 18.2%, the largest increase ever. The cost of taking your family to a sporting event up 13.5%. This actually isn't good for you and your family. It may be fine for the nation compared to other nations, but for you and me, it's not. Let me give you some more numbers here. Food costs are up 2.6%. Food that you eat at home as opposed to going to a restaurant, total cost increase, 1.2%. The cost of frozen non-carbonated juices and drinks up 29%. Those are your frozen lemonades and, and orange juices. The cost of uncooked beef up 10.7%. The cost of baby formula and baby food up 8.7%. The cost of sugar up 7.2%, which is why the juices and drinks are up so high. The cost of fats and oils, including peanut butter, classified as a fat, 5.1%. The cost of crackers and bread up 5.1%. The cost of frozen vegetables up 5%. The cost of carbonated soft drinks up 4.8%. The cost of food from vending machines, like the one here in, in my office at the flagship station, All the price has gone up over a dollar for a Snicker bar now. 10.6% increase. The cost of electricity up 3.8% now. What about the cost of real world living? Take out food, which a lot of food impact is energy costs. So, The cost of the farmer driving the tractor to plow the field, the cost of the gas for the tractor gets factored into the cost. The cost of the transport to the factory gets gets baked into the cost. The cost of the transport from the factory to the grocery store gets baked into the cost. The cost of the building of, of the labor to make the cardboard box and the bag and the transport of it to the factory, all that gets baked into the cost. So take energy out of it. Take food out of it. Motor vehicle insurance up 20.6%. Repair of household items up 18.2%. Admission to sporting events up 13.5%. Tax 
preparation services up 11.2%. Veterinarian services up 9.6%. Non-prescription drugs up 9.2%. The cost to ship items, 9.1% increase. Outpatient hospital services up 8.3%. Motor vehicle repair up 7.9%. Sewing machines, fabric, and supplies. You know, my wife is a quilter. My wife spends a lot of my money on fabric. 7.1% increase. The care of elderly, 6.7% increase. The cost for garbage and trash collection, 6.4% increase. The rent of your primary residence, up 6.1%. Cable TV services, live streaming and satellite services, up 5.7%. Dry cleaning, up 5.4%. Daycare and preschool costs, up 4.7%. The cost of haircuts and other personal services up 4.2%. Yes, your paycheck overall can buy more, but that actually declined this month compared to last month. And your paycheck, you don't feel it growing. It's growing, but it's growing at 1%. That's not really enough for you to feel. Yes, inflation for groceries has declined to 1.2% over the last 12 months. That just that just means prices are growing slowly as opposed to at a 13% increase last year. Prices aren't actually coming down except for energy, and that's slowing the rate of, of increase for everything else. Energy prices actually have gone down. I was able to fill up with Supreme Unleaded this morning, coming to my office for like $3.50 a gallon, which is actually good compared to what I had been paying. I have got to put Supreme in my... Yukon, or the engine rattles. But you're feeling this stuff on a daily basis. It, the White House, they can say all this stuff, but it doesn't really matter to you because in your household income, you're not, you're not feeling it. The New York Times actually has a story. It's kind of an interesting story. What's behind a $10 chicken over rice? So for those of you who are in New York City, one of the big street foods in New York City uh, is uh, chicken and rice. It is a Middle Eastern dish. I grew up eating it. It's very good. It's essentially it's a spicy chicken. Uh, you put it over rice. It's drenched in this yogurt sauce. Typically, it comes with a bed of lettuce or something as a salad. 10 bucks Used to be 6 bucks before the pandemic. Now it's 10 bucks at Halal Palace. It's a food truck in New York. Why? Well, because the owner now pays $22.50 for a 10-pound bag of chicken, which is double the cost from 2020. A box of the clamshell styrofoam containers, now $28. They were $11 in 2020. A gallon of the yogurt-based sauce he uses is now $13 compared to the $9 before the pandemic. The red sauce that most people like, it's a spicy sauce, is $23 a gallon. I'm from $11 a gallon. And then... To get his food truck license, it's $18,000 because the government in New York restricts the number of food trucks that are available. And because they restrict the number of food trucks available, you've got to rent a food truck from one that's gone out of business so that they keep their license and give it to you. And it's $18,000 because the cost of government is driving up costs as well. Let's go back to one that's more applicable to you than a food truck in New York City. The cost of getting your taxes done. Through an H&R Block or a TurboTax or whatever, it's all gone up, and TurboTax sucks. You know what was so funny is when George Bush was president, George Bush actually proposed that you shouldn't have to file your taxes anymore. Essentially, what the government would do would take all the 1099s and all of the W-2s that come in for you that are filed on your behalf and say, we believe this is how much you owe in taxes— If you dispute it, file taxes. Otherwise, here's what you're getting back as a refund or here's what you owe. And the government would do that. And and, and these companies came out and said, no, 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 no. We we can offer a free version of our tax filing services and let people keep paying taxes. And Bush fought it, but the Congress said, no, we should go with the private business and let them do this. Probably the government would have ultimately screwed it up, but – these private companies have screwed it up as well. Everybody screwed up the tax system. It's too complicated now. Nobody can use it. And you're paying that cost of the screwed up tax service. You're paying the cost when you go to the grocery store. You're paying the cost when you go to the pump. All of these things 
the prices keep going up. And the Biden administration can say, well, the macroeconomic picture is so great. Look at us compared to Europe, China, Canada, Mexico. You name the country. We're doing better than everybody. Yeah, but are you, ladies and gentlemen, are you doing better? Are you better off now than you were four years ago? An increasing number of people who hated Donald Trump realize actually they were way better off when he was president. And that is Joe Biden's problem. Well, Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. You can call in be a part of the show. 877-973-7425. Uh, I, I just real quick, I, I do want to comment on this. I wasn't sure that I wanted to, but I kind of actually do. Um, this is Tucker Carlson from a global fo- world global governmental forum. How did that happen? How did that happen? And at a certain point, I don't think the average person cares as much about abstractions as about the concrete reality of his life. And if you can't use your subway, for example, as many people are afraid to in New York City because it's too dangerous, You have to sort of wonder, like, isn't that the ultimate measure of leadership? And that's true. By the way, it's radicalizing for an American to go to Moscow. I didn't know that. I've learned it this week. To Singapore, to Tokyo, to Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Because these cities, no matter how we're told they're run and on what principles they're run, are wonderful places to live. That don't have rampant inflation where you're not going to get raped. Sir, excuse me. What is that? Okay. I I, got to say something about this. I, you know, I'm willing to criticize Tucker Carlson. Um, I like him. I, I don't always agree with him. In fact, I find myself disagreeing with him more often than not these days. Uh, and to the extent that he would praise Moscow and its subway system and stuff, the the downtown Moscow area is, is designed essentially propagandistically. Um, go outside of that area and you run into problems. You run into problems in Paris, for example, uh, as well, the Paris subway system. Um, but to his point as well, uh, in Singapore, in Moscow, uh, you're not going to get mugged on the subway system like you are in New York City. And we are seeing a progressive collapse, and it's not a coincidence, in, in Paris, which has a very um, bad subway system outside the central tourist hub or London as well. It, there are progressive politicians as well there that are lax on crime. Now, you don't want to go too far into praising the governmental operations of Moscow or Russia because it actually is a tyrannical system where critics of the president are jailed or killed. But you do have to recognize as well that he's not necessarily wrong in his criticism. When you look at public transportation in those areas, you're far less likely to be mugged in Singapore or Moscow on the subway system than you are in New York City, and maybe we should be paying attention to that. It's not an endorsement of authoritarianism, just law and order. Now, i got to tell you about Hillsdale College that takes our Constitution very seriously, thankfully. Hillsdale College is in Michigan, and they are essentially stewards of our constitutional system and how they structure, train, and teach the future of America, and they want to share that with you. If you go to ericforhillsdale.com, they will send you a free pocket constitution with the Declaration of Independence for you or for a friend. And you can also listen to their Constitution Minutes that run during the ad segments on this program. They're prepared by Hillsdale College to try to reinvigorate an American understanding of authentic constitutionalism. You can share with your friends. You can even learn how to take courses at Hillsdale College on the Constitution and, and other things, including a great one on C.S. Lewis. Hillsdale College is committed to good stewardship of our constitutional system. They want you to be as well. Improve your mind, deepen your understanding, get a free pocket constitution. Go to ericforhillsdale.com today. E-R-I-C-K, ericforhillsdale.com. Go check them out today and appreciate their commitment to constitutionalism. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released 
released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere, and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program? I want to talk to you about a subject that you're not going to hear about in the national press. And it actually bothers me pretty tremendously that you're not going to hear about it in the national press. When I tell you what it is, you're going to understand immediately why you're not going to hear about it in the national press. But you you should. That you're not hearing about it shows the uh, poison of the intersectionalism and critical theory of uh, the left as uh, we see in in the media and how it shapes coverage of things. Need to go back to 2018 to Aberdeen, Maryland. There was a Rite Aid distribution facility in, in Aberdeen, Maryland, or is a Rite Aid distribution facility, Rite Aid the pharmacy. And in an incident they classify as workplace violence, a shooter went in and began shooting the place up, uh, going after employees um, in the Rite Aid distribution facility. Then in 2022, of course, there was the Colorado Springs nightclub shooting. There was the Denver Charter Schools uh, shooter a couple of years ago where a kid walked in to the charter school and began shooting at the students. One of the most notable ones of late is the Nashville school shooting. All those elementary school kids killed by the shooter. In January of this year, in Iowa, there was a school shooting. Kid comes into the school, begins to shoot up the place. Lakewood Church, on Sunday, a shooter came in with a child, a five-year-old child, not expected to live in critical condition in the hospital, not expected to live, used the child as a human shield, intended to shoot the place up. In every single one of these instances, the shooter was transgender, except the Colorado shooter identified as non-binary. The Colorado Springs nightclub. All of these other shootings, the Aberdeen, Maryland shooting, the Nashville shooting, the Denver shooting, the Iowa shooting, the Texas Lakewood Church shooting, all of them trans shooters. You know, one of the things is uh, the, the hormones for a girl transitioning to be a boy, the level of testosterone and other uh, hormones injected can cause uh, emotional roller coasters, uh, can cause rage. It's like uh, you hear roid rage. That, that's kind of what it is. We're not hearing about those. In fact, the Iowa shooting happened the first day back at school, January 5th this year. 17-year-old student at Perry High School in Iowa shot a sixth grader, killed the sixth grader, wounded five others, committed suicide. The shooter identified as trans And NBC News, this is their headline, Musk, meaning Elon Musk, Elon Musk and far-right figure seize on Iowa shooter's possible LGBTQ identity. If it was a Trump supporter who shot up these, if it was a pattern of Trump supporters, if it was a pattern of white nationalists, you would see this wall-to-wall in the media. It would be an ongoing conversation in the press that it was a white nationalist, that it was a Trump supporter, that it was a conservative. Remember the guy who ran his car into the parade 
in um, in, in Wisconsin. Was it Waukesha, Wisconsin? They were having a parade. The guy ran the car in. Uh, when it turned out, the guy was not just uh, black, but supported progressive black nationalist, lib- black liberation causes. Suddenly, the headlines were, car kills individuals in parade. The car did it. It's never the gun that kills. It's always the shooter. But with this guy... It was the guy. It was the car. It wasn't him. It was the car that did it. He turns out to have been a progressive, black progressive activist. At the Lakewood Church over the weekend, it was not just a trans person. It was a free Palestine activist trans person with a history of crime and mental issues. And by definition, being transgender, you got mental issues. They want to focus on the other mental issues, not that aspect of it, though. This is from CNN. Information from Marino's social media accounts and local authorities paint a portrait of a single mother with a history of mental health challenges going through the ups and downs of trying to turn her life around to launch a business. The Houston Homicide Command, Christopher Hasek, said the shooter used multiple aliases, including both male and female nouns. Marino was put under an order for emotional detention in 2016, and she had mental health uh, history documented. Records from the Texas Department of Public Safety show Marino had a string of arrests for minor offenses over the past two decades, including possession of marijuana, an assault, illegal possession of a weapon, resisting arrest, forgery charges. A CNN review showed the story of a bitter custody battle between Marino and representatives for her ex-spouse's family played out on social media accounts. She had her divorce proceedings transferred to a county court. She was arrested on a weapons charge, misdemeanor. There's a family dispute between the shooter and her ex-husband, her ex-husband's family, some of whom were Jewish. She threatened, said she had a bomb, she was going to blow things up. Clearly a troubled individual. But here's the wild thing. Transgenderism, what, what is it? It is it is your belief that your mind and body are not in alignment. That, that's what transgenderism is. You believe, though you, I, you are biologically a male, that mentally you are convinced you are a female. And the progressive solution is not to try to align your body with your brain, but try to align your brain with your body through radical surgeries and medications that progressive groups like Planned Parenthood and others can profit off of. That it's it's easier in their mind to give you drugs and surgeries and align your brain with your body than to treat you to align your body with your brain, which is a non-surgical therapeutic issue. So they'll focus on all the other mental issues, and all of these people clearly have mental issues, and let's just be clear here. If you are willing to undergo surgeries and drug treatment therapies to alter your body significantly, to align your brain and body together in some way where your brain now sees your body and all the scars and issues and says, this is the real me, you clearly got issues. The way the media covers these things They give excuses. It's very much related. It actually is very much related to the situation between Israel and Hamas. It actually is. You're thinking, what on earth does transgender shooters have to do with Israel and Hamas, Erickson? You lost your brain? No, 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 no. See, in the the pantheon of intersectionalism and critical theory, the whole world is broken down as oppressor versus oppressed. It's the oppressor versus the oppressed. And it is your characteristics that make you oppressor or oppressed, the color of your skin, your sexual identity, your gender identity, your your sexuality, where you live, do you worship, do you have ability or disability, all those things align. The outward appearances in particular 
define whether you're an oppressor or oppressed. And in the case of Hamas, they are viewed as oppressed. So they actually, according to the intersectional ideas, they have no agency. They are defined as a class of oppressed people. And because they're oppressed people, they have no power. Therefore, they have no agency. So when Hamas rejects Israel's offered ceasefire, they have no actual power to accept a ceasefire. Only Israel can stop firing because Israel is the oppressor. It doesn't matter what the oppressed does. It doesn't matter what Hamas does, did, or will do. It matters what Israel does, did, or will do. So Israel is to be blamed for everything because Israel is the oppressor class. You'll remember a few years ago in Atlanta, the young man was struggling with sex addiction, claimed he converted to Christianity, still struggled with sex addiction, was going to the Asian massage parlors that are essentially brothels, decided the only way to get over sex addiction was to go kill the women who were giving him sex. So he went and shot up the Asian massage parlors. And we had this massive wave of coverage of anti-Asian violence, and it was designed to tie it to white people. It was white people who were oppressors, the white people who were the bad ones. Well, then the data comes out, and it turns out that uh, most anti-Asian violence in this country is done by young black men. And a number of videos came out from Los Angeles, from San Francisco, from Denver, from Chicago, from New York. And it showed young black men assaulting mostly elderly Asian people who just happened to be walking by. And you had that University of Colorado professor in Boulder come out and say, well, actually what's happening here is this is still white supremacy because the young black men are oppressed just like the Asians are oppressed because none of them are white. And so the oppressor class has imposed burdens on both of them and the young black men are acting out against their oppression and they can't dare act out against the oppressor who could oppress them further. So they act out against another oppressed class. And that's how it was viewed and they dropped the subject. We don't talk about it anymore because it turns out it wasn't white people oppressing the Asians. In fact, it's the white people at Harvard who are trying to block the Asians from getting in so they can get in more non-white, non-Asian people. It's the way all of this works. It's the way it all works. So you're not hearing major media covers about the number of the growing number of transgender shooters at schools and churches. Because they're oppressed. They have no agency. They have no volition. If it was a white guy, if it was a Trump supporter, it'd be wall-to-wall coverage today still. We'd be talking about it today still. It'd be a multi-day news story. The media is shaping coverage of these events based on the intersectional criteria of who they think is the oppressor and who they think is the oppressed. Meanwhile, we have a growing problem. These trans activists are becoming more violent. This one in particular was a pro-Hamas, free Palestine a trans activist who put free Palestine on her gun. And she was a she who began to identify as a he. Some people on the right got it wrong, but I mean, do look at her. No Adam's apple. Clearly a woman. The media is not covering the stuff. They don't want to cover the stuff. They don't want to talk about it because they view them as an oppressed class of people as opposed to an increasingly violent class of people who are given hormones and medicines that can make them more violent, who are clearly initially suffering with mental issues because their bodies and their minds do not align. And you're not allowed to talk about that. You're a, you're a hater. You're a bigot. You're a bad person. You're a transphobe. Can we not recognize the pattern? Are we not supposed to? Or only are we only supposed to recognize the pattern when it's a white guy with a Trump sticker on the back of his car or a Don't Tread on Me sticker or a Molan Lob sticker on the back of his car? We should resist the temptation to define people by classes of people, and instead we should be focused on the individual culpability. But that's not how the media plays the game, and we should note there is a class of shooter that's growing in this country And it's not an oppressor class. It's a class of people already struggling with mental issues who are given medicines and hormones that can make them more aggressive. They won't talk about it, but I will, and I'm sure I'll get hate mail, but it still needs to be said. 
I also need to tell you about Vision Computers. If you go to Vision Computers, visioncomputers.com or 404 Compute, you can call Vision Computers and let them be your IT department. Now, y'all, I, I, so I think about a, a buddy of mine. He was, when I worked at a law firm, he was our in-house IT guy. They paid him a salary. He set up all the computers. He did everything, e- email, troubleshooting, printer support, all that. We paid him a great salary. He's a great dude. He's doing well in life. God bless him. But a lot of small businesses can't afford to have that guy who is in your office every day fixing computers, troubleshooting, answering your questions. How do I get my computer to do something? That's where Vision Computers comes in. They fill the void. They're like your in-house IT guy, except you call them and your employees get a phone number faster than Google search. Vision Computers answers the phone and helps you uh, with email, with printer support, with how do I do this on my computer. They can build the computers for you as well, laptops, desktops, PCs, workstations, gaming PCs, servers, whatever you need. They can get your company set up. They can do it for your home as well. So you, dad or mom, you're not your in-house IT, and you're not the IT person at your office. You are the person getting the most bang for your buck, keeping your company going with vision there to keep the lights on and the computers functioning. 404 Compute, call them anywhere nationwide. If you tell them I sent you, say Eric Erickson told me to call you. Give you an even better deal, one that you won't even see online at visioncomputers.com. Be a longtime partner with Vision Computers. They're going to be around just like your business. 404 Compute, visioncomputers.com. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18. Plus. This hour of the program brought to you by First Liberty Building and Loan. They are in noon in Georgia, but don't let that deter you. If you're in Kalispell, Montana, or Los Angeles, California, anywhere in the nation, First Liberty can help your business grow. If you're buying a building, building a building, buying a franchise, you need 250000 or more, those are the sorts of deals First Liberty specializes in. They want to work with you. FirstLibertyGA.com. Get all their contact info there. Spend 10 minutes with them. See if you're a fit for them. See if they're a fit for you. FirstLibertyGA.com. There's a special election in New York. It is for George Santos' seat on Long Island. Uh, it's actually kind of intriguing. So it is the Democrat who Santos beat. Uh, his name is Tom Susie. He's facing uh, Maisie Phillip. Maisie Phillip is a Republican. She is a native of Ethiopia. She served in the Israeli Defense Force. She's got one heck of a biography, and it's going to be a very close race. And I will go on record right now telling you that uh, whether the Democrats or Republicans win, it doesn't matter. The race apparently too close to call. What they're going to tell you in all these cases is that this matters as a harbinger of what's to come in the election. I'm going to tell you right now it's wrong. I don't know what the polling is. I don't know who's going to win. It's too close to call one way or the other. Uh, uh, but I can tell you it's not going to matter in in November of 2024. And don't just believe me. Uh, Nate Cohen from The New York Times, Nate Silver, uh, all the data analysts out there say it's not. Uh, one, this district is set to be redistricted. Two, other districts around the country are set to be redistricted based on court order. That's going to affect the House more than this. Also, this is a swingy part of Long Island, so it can go both ways. The Democrats have outspent the Republicans. The Republicans seem to have a good ground game. You're not going to be able to extrapolate uh, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, North Carolina. From this, those are the electoral college swing states that matter. Wisconsin as well. New York is not a swing state. New York doesn't have a Republican organization uh, the way that these other states do, so don't if, if the Republicans lose, don't freak out. But if the Republicans win, don't get overconfident. New York is not going to be representative. And all the high-minded people on television tonight who, depending on which way this goes, claim credit and say this is great for Trump or bad for Trump or great for Biden or Bi- bad for Biden, you can probably ignore them moving forward. You're not going to be able to extrapolate from this race in this district on Long Island in New York to any of the swing states. People love to make mountains out of molehills. This is a molehill election, uh, and you just you can't do it. I don't care who wins. It's The only thing it's going to affect is the composition of the House. The Democrats may make it harder for Republicans, or Republicans may be able to pad their margins, but that's all that's going to matter. 
That's the truth of this election, the special election. Who cares what the media actually says? Now, when we come back, we got to get into what's happening with Joe Biden and the MSNBC dance to convince the base that it's safe to get in the water for Joe Biden while the apologetics are getting strong and fast. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.